What's going on guys? Come, Scar coming at you with another Magic the Gathering video. Today I want to do something a little bit different. What I'm actually doing today is, if you didn't see from the intro, is we're going to be diving into the new player experience in MTG Arena for the first time players who are just getting into the game or maybe, you know, players who haven't been able to play a physical game of Magic and are diving into Magic maybe for the first time ever or whatnot. Uh, with this video, we are actually just going to start on a completely fresh account. I don't have any wild cards saved up. I don't have any of that stuff stored. With that being said, let's dive into some of the basics. So the first and foremost, when you first get into Magic the Gathering, we do have to go through the color challenge. If we don't know what the color challenge is, after you do the tutorial mission, you have to play X amount of games against X amount of colors, and you kind of unlock certain things as you go along. As we play a Johnny, uh, Johnny Goldmane, we'll unlock more cards for our white. Same thing with the blue, so on and so forth. We're going to be unlocking cards for our decks to overall make them to the maximum capabilities. You can go into your decks themselves. These are the new updated starter decks that got updated as of rotation. These cards actually will never rotate as of right now from MTG Arena. Uh, that's currently what uh, Wizards has said. There are also multicolor decks that we will eventually unlock. Those cards do actually are going to those decks will actually rotate when the rotation happens next year but a lot of those decks are a lot of mechanics that are, come from the sets that are currently mtg arena whereas these decks are more so like a basic blue white green uh red or black starter deck uh in a sense that they just kind of want these evergreen decks to kind of just be around you can make adjustments to them but if you make any adjustments to them that are outside of these arena card labeled cards uh, you are going to have to replace them when the new rotation happens. With that also being said, I'm sure there'll be also be new multicolor starter decks come next year, but that we're getting too far ahead of ourselves. The next thing I'm going to do is actually going to go and look up online, uh, do a quick Google search, and I'm going to actually get us some free packs without actually having to spend a dime. The way you do that is you just look up MPG Arena codes or something like that into your web browser. You're going to get to a website and you are more than likely can click on probably the first one, which will bring you to the MTG wiki, which should show you all of the available codes for MTG Arena. And I'm going to go about doing that and we're just going to copy and paste them in. I uh, probably will speed up this part of the video, but you can watch me enter them. I'm just going to do the ones that will give me free packs. We'll get into the cosmetic ones later. But for right now, we're going to start building up our collection of getting ourselves some free packs. All right, with that being said, as you can kind of see here, we now have packs of MTG Arena. We have some Guilds of Ravnica, Ravnica Allegiance, War of the Spark, so on and so forth, and, and also some Core 2021 because I did enter a code to get us free XP to kind of level ourselves up on the free battle pass. So the point of, rather than really diving into this, Guilds of Ravnica, Ravnica Allegiance, and War of the Spark, and Core Set 2020 are gonna be rotating out in about a couple weeks as of recording of this video. Uh, so these cards actually won't be legal in standard, but the one benefit is as we open these packs We're actually gonna fill up these wheels up at the top here Which are gonna unlock ourselves some wild cards to then redeem four typical rares that we are looking for I'm actually not gonna dive into anything right off the bat into uh, Any particular deck build I want to do we're gonna start ourselves off with just trying to unlock the all of the basic decks and then unlock all of the multicolor decks and go from there first and foremost so with that being said, I'm just going to do some quick pack opening. Let's see what we kind of get. I'm going to probably speed up the process as well, just so it goes a little bit quicker. So let's do that. So now just going to take a quick look and we're actually going to look at the three, the five decks that we have unlocked right off the bat. As you can kind of see here, we have a 
a, a cold blooded killers deck that we kind of have to play more in order to get the rest of the cards to kind of unlock these decks but these are the five starters and the other thing too is these decks are not ready to play against anybody else but i don't think we actually have to play against anybody else as you can kind of see here we can only do bot matches uh we don't have the play mode to actually play against anybody so the next thing we're probably going to do now before we dive into anything else is we're actually going to just play some of this uh you know color challenge hopefully these games do not take too long i'm going to try my best to see how many i can fit in into this video if not i may have to edit it, this part all out and then kind of like jump to the next part once we gotta get to that part all right this is definitely gonna hurt um i think a part of me wants to play the impression ornator uh and then kind of hopefully get into our life game going uh, play a hollow priest gain some life um, hopefully get creatures big enough that they can't actually steamroll through me uh, we're not gonna block i'll take the two uh, we'll play that we will play the good old hallowed priest triggering gain life making that bigger and no attacks say go all right so this is gonna hurt a little bit just because they did draw very well um, Raid Barbarment is a good card, but we're not going to block again. We'll take the damage, but we're going to because we're going to gain some life. Uh, yes, so what we'll do is we'll play another one of these, which will kind of trigger this one twice. Or we'll trigger that one, but now when we play the next one, this would trigger twice. And then this will, these both will go up again. Um, I could block. They are going to get a bunch of creatures. Part of me wants to block our attack. Uh, I'm gonna hold back though. I really don't know what the opponent's gonna do. Okay, so they slowed down, which is good. And then we can actually start playing a little bit bigger of a board. I don't think this deck plays any board wipes, so we don't think to worry about that. Now these guys are getting very big. We're gonna gain our life pretty much back. And then we're just gonna swing in big damage, making them having to block. All right, that's perfectly fine. I don't know if they're gonna do anything, but they decide to double block each. I don't have anything with trample, so. Kind of leaves them open for an attack. They do have a 4-4 Flyer Haster, which is not the biggest of deals, but I think this actually leaves them dead on board just because I think that is actually 15, 19, yeah, that's 23, uh, I think. 24, I can math. All right, so this one's going to be a little more of a challenge because it looks like they're running a lot of death touchers. So we can't really block into the rats. We're just going to have to take these pings. And we're also going to have to like worry about our attacks with that being a thing as well, just because they do have death touch. So if they don't they don't swing aggressively, it's going to be a little bit tough for us in that sense. We are going to take two. We're not going to block because this thing will get bigger every time one of our creatures dies. Uh, I am going to actually play an impassion coordinator just so I can get some life. We're not going to attack again. We are then going to play the Hallowed Priest, but then gets two triggers, uh, no blocks. Uh, Hallowed Priest. Two triggers. Um, I think I will swing back. Alright, that is perfectly fine. They are going to play a Flyer. Uh, that's also fine. I'm not going to block. Uh, we are going to, should I put it in the air? I'm mean, either way, I can kind of, I think we do this just because this puts it out of range of being double blocked. And now this swings over. May play another one, interesting. Uh, no blocks. All right, so another Hollow Priest, which is good, I think. Pumping on my other Hollow Priest. Uh, we'll swing in for eight, which is more than likely they have to block. Interesting. Another rat. We're not dead on board. 
Uh, it's 810. No cards in hand. I'd be at two. Uh, no blocks. And then they, they we pretty much win, right? All right, right into match number two here. We do have the Moreland Inqu Inquisitor, which is decent in this matchup because we can give it first strike. Uh, it does cost three mana to give it three uh, first strike. Uh, no blocks, we'll take the two damage. Um, we can set up this turn now for a block. Uh, we will swing in. Okay, they don't have anything, which is good. Um, I think I'm going to block and we're going to pump. Let's see if they have counter. They do not. Eat that damage, which is good. But we are drawing a lot of lands, which is not good. So they are playing mono blue, so it's not like they're running hasters, but they could be playing big things. That's something that is could be a pain in the butt for us to deal with. Um, that is not going to help us yet. No attacks and turn. That has flying. We are at five mana. And they have another one. Great. Uh, yes, we will take the damage. My turn. What does this do? Tap all creatures your opponent's control. Creatures you control gain life link within a turn. Um. Yeah. I guess that's good because then we can get in for we can gain four life back. And then next turn we can set up for a big ol' one of those guys. Though that kind of sucks. Uh Yeah, I don't know what I can do here. I'm just dead on board. Did not know you could die to the starter deck. I thought everything's like set up to... Alright, more you know. Interesting. I think the game is actually trying to tell me something because the hand is exactly the same. I think I'm going to sit back. I think I'm going to just keep up the first strike. Guessing this is what it what it was meant to do instead of playing the tactical advantage. Um, yeah. So we're gonna play another one. I'm gonna swing in here. I guess I didn't see the puzzle to the game. strike it so I guess that's the play is to get around the damage is that you actually wait with that instead of like using it to protect your creature uh, we don't need that just yet that's flying so I'm not gonna attack and turn next turn they're gonna play a second one because that's how play out exactly the turn before Um, hmm. So I could set up a big turn. Like, I could set this up. I am not going to be dead, so that's good. Uh, no attacks in turn. And I can set up a very big, like, let's gain a bunch of life next turn, turn. 
because I think that's this is actually the play. I'm essentially thinking that these these like little starter games are all puzzles, to be quite honest. All right, we're at six, which is not great. Um, but I think we're okay in the sense that this is essentially meant to be and what we're supposed to do here. And then we're just going to gain a crap ton of life because everything needs double strike. This guy gets just super large. We're back up at 20. All right, so they do play another bunch of creatures to gain a bunch of cards. They are digging very deep. They also drew nine mana. Also, I don't know why they would do that because that essentially puts them dead unless they had a bounce spell, but that is essentially makes them all dead because they, I have four creatures. Interesting. Interesting. All right, solve puzzle. We are playing mono green is the call here. Um, we do have one of these bad boys, which is a 1-1 double striker, but with tactical advantage, we can surprise our opponent with a block. Um, we could swing in. I think that's the play. Because it's whenever it is blocking our blocks. So we can swing in. They're more than likely going to block. So then we do this, pump this up. Uh, then we are going to guess. Okay, I guess we kill it. And we're gonna play another one. All right, so they play another one. We get another tactical advantage. We're going to tactical advantage here, and essentially do the same thing. Okay. Oh, that's a big dinosaur. Well, I guess dinosaur goes gets pacified, which is good for us. And then we're going to do four damage to them. Now we got a five, three hex grouper, which is not that bad, which we can't target with the can't target with the pacifism, but we can essentially kill it here. And then we can do the same thing. We can pacify whatever they play, which is another giant dinosaur. Awesome. They just have all the giant dinosaurs, which is the play. So that we can get in for more damage. And the next turn we can play the Sarah Angel and hopefully set up for a victory. Or we could just win the game, I think, here, right? Because putting this on any of these essentially makes them unblockable. Or it does makes it to do X amount of damage in the air. Alright, we're on the play. Uh this hand looks pretty good. It's got things. I guess you can definitely see our hand, our deck getting better as we're doing this. We do not have another charm stray in the battlefield, unfortunately. Sad charm stray. Interesting. So what is the play here? Do we we have a Reacher? We could play a good old impassioned coordinator. It just has reach to put on it. So that's not the scariest thing. I think we do this to start gaining some life. And then we say no attacks and we kind of sit back. They may play pumps. If it attacks, they may have a pump, but I guess they don't have a turn two play, which is good. We'll play the Moreland Inquisitor. Uh, we will swing in, I guess. See what happens here. Uh, we will bump that up. Now, part of me is now looking up at the top corner. And I'm, can't, I can't be sure if this is an actual player or if this is the computer. Alright, they have another spider. 
Because they kind of touch the cards like a real player would. That's fair. Oh man, Raid is about to draw another charm straight too. Play another charm stray. Got lucky. Got lucky. He did miss a land drop, which kind of stinks. They have two cards in graveyard. They pass turn. We don't have anything to really protect these, but we'll attack him with these two. See what he does here. Damage. Which is fine. We end turn. We still miss a land drop. We do have decent stuff in our hand once we start drawing those lands again. You have a lot of mana. I guess they are gonna fight again. That's fine. Our deals damage, essentially. All right, they're gonna hit me for one damage. Makes it tough to think that they actually are a player, just on the basis of why would a player leave themselves open for damage? If, if it wasn't a player, or if it was a human, I feel like they would all right, they got a 4-2 Trampler. They swing in for one. I feel like a player wouldn't. In this situation, being at six mana. Okay, they didn't. Um, weigh my options here. Let me swing in here. See what they do. That's fine. We'll take four. We're just not a very high life total if they decide to attack. All right, they got a Woodland Mystic. Uh, we're gonna pass. No blocks, pass. I'll take the four. I don't think it's the biggest of deals. All right, there we go. We got the fifth mana, which is good. All right, so they're not going to do anything interesting. We can play con confront the assault here. They may be playing something very, very big. I mean, they only have four cards. I think what they need four of it, four other cards. So they need one other card. Distribute plus one plus one counters across one or two. So they got 10-8. Interesting. Let's confront the assault. Gain some life. We're actually going to take all 10. Uh, we'll just tap them down and swing it for game, essentially. All right, so I mean, our rewards are pretty good. We got a uh, cosmetic, we got some wild cards, which is gonna definitely help us out trying to build out a deck when we get outside of this or just look improving maybe one of the starter decks. And then we got some XP and some coins, which is definitely also gonna be good because a thousand coins now allows us to buy another pack if we wanted to, save up to maybe do a draft and then so on and so forth. Also, we have nine common wild cards, 11 uncommons, five rares and one mythic, which is all good. And essentially what we need to do is we need to actually do all these challenges. Why is it not? Play against another player using the white deck, win or lose, compete this color challenge. No one knows who it will be. All right. Wait, did I, did I just do that? I, I have all the cards, right? 
yeah okay so i guess it, i guess the ui is bugged all right guys with that being said we're actually gonna wrap up the video here i'm gonna kind of you know maybe dive into this maybe uh, on a once a video a week series where we'll just kind of go through and we'll kind of go through that new player experience so these decks will probably roll out once a week uh if you guys like this video let me know by hitting the hit in the like button or leaving a comment down below if you definitely want to see more of this or what you want to kind of see for a new player the goal here is that this is going to be a free-to-play account we're not actually going to invest any actual real world money so whatever we earn here is going to be all with playing in the game essentially outside of the occasional the free promo codes that wizards does send you the the codes that i did get online that to redeem some packs which are available for you if uh you want to i'll leave a link down in the description to where i got the codes from uh with that being said guys i appreciate you guys watching the video and until next time i'll see you later